I need to take my addiction as seriously as he is. And it's not fair that he works on his if I'm not going to work on mine. And I can't expect more from him than I expect from myself. I watch you as you drive. Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on. I put my feet up. And we just sing along. Can't help but feeling just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome to you as well. My name is Jennifer, and this, this is Jean. Is Jean. So I haven't made a video in a couple weeks, and uh, this is going to be kind of an update video. I'm gonna let you know where I'm at as a person as an individual where Gene is at in his life and where we are together in our lives just kind of like a fill you in on where I've been in the last two weeks first before we get into the video there's a couple things that I want to talk about first I made a community post and a lot of you have responded already I have sold 12 bears already and thank you guys so much for your support and of those of you who did not see the community post, I am selling these cute little, this is the first one I made. They are cute. Cute little hero bears for the frontline heroes that have been working tirelessly during this whole pandemic to keep us healthy and keep us safe. And the proceeds for this, minus the cost of materials, will go to a... COVID-19 charitable um, foundation. I haven't decided which one that will be yet, but once I do, I will let you know, and then I will show you what I'm gonna donate to and what they do, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but you can order one of these cute little bears. They come in two sizes. There's This is the small, and then there's one that's slightly larger. I don't have one of those right here to show you. Um, the one I have has a head and legs, but doesn't have arms. So, um, it's slightly larger. It's like three inches bigger. So this one is the size, the small one, of course, and this will be $35, which includes shipping. And the big one will be $50, which includes shipping as well. And you can have it with the standard blue scrubs. And this is unisex. It represents both male, female. There's no, I know somebody had asked if I was going to make one for a female, but I think this just represents male, females, they both wear scrubs. I don't see a difference. It's gender neutral. Gender neutral, yes. And so, if you just want the standard blue, that's fine. If you, I'll show you a couple pictures, I'll put them in here as I'm talking. Um, I did this one as a gift for, it was ordered for the lady, wanted it as a gift for her doctor, and her doctor is a WVU, West Virginia University doctor, and of course WVU colors are gold and blue. So as you can see, the bear is the standard brown with the gold scrubs and the navy blue hat and mask. So it, it's customizable for any colors that you want, but you just have to cut, let me know in an email what colors you're looking for. Also, the email that you're gonna use is a new one. I had messed up the first time on the email address and I'll leave it in the description below. But the email address is me, you, and a cat named Moo at gmail.com. Like I said, you'll leave that in, I'll leave that in the description below. And when you order, there is a required $20 deposit for your bear, so I know that you're serious about ordering one so I don't make it and then I don't get paid for them because it does take time. Um, and then when I do ship it, I will provide you with a shipping number and then that's when the remainder of the money is due. So if you wanna order one, just drop me an email and we can discuss it and get your order in there. I appreciate you guys so much and thank you for all the orders I've gotten so far. And then also, while we're talking about ordering things, Gene has a video on his channel and I will link that in the description below. And you want to tell them a little bit about your... Yeah, um, selling portraits uh, again. I've finished out uh, my last list of people. So 
uh, or my first list first and last. And so I'm opening it back up to whoever wants a portrait done. We'll show some examples here. And uh, it's just like Jennifer, uh, it's, except, you know, it'll be 30 up front, then 30 when I finish. But uh, you can get more details on my channel, which is Gen X, that's G E N X, as in Generation X. And you can hop on over there and take a look also of that video as well. And we'll leave all that, all his info in the description below as well. So you can check it out. He is very talented and I'm not being partial. Maybe I am partial, but still, I know talent when I see it. Definitely being partial because, no. you know. No, that's not true. He is an amazing artist and you can see by the pictures we showed that he is extremely talented and I hope you guys will want to order a picture and pick one up and get a little piece of his artwork for yourself. All right, I think that's all we need to tell them about other things. We can just start talking about where we've been and what's been going on. I've had a lot of people ask if I was ever gonna make a video again. Um, so, like, a lot of my videos have started out. Struggle, struggle is real. A lot of people are also triggered and I don't know where to look. A lot of people are like, are bothered when I look, to, look at you when you talk, like I'm looking for your approval. And I'm not looking for his approval, I'm just looking at it. I don't know whether to keep looking at the camera or look at him. Was, was that a problem? That's a, yeah, a lot of people I'll, have a I'll, problem I look at you when you talk. I know. I don't know. No, they think that I'm looking at you for approval. Really? Yeah. Well, you should be. <laughs> um, okay, so, like I said, we've been struggling. Um, it's gotten a lot better in the last few weeks but we have been struggling a lot. Um, it started a few months ago, and as we had made the video prior that we have both been off the wagon and not doing well. Um, in both of our addictions, we entered into this relationship knowing that we were both addicts, and we, know, we knew that a relationship with two addicts is difficult. It can be difficult as any relationship yep. can be difficult, but <clears throat> when you have addiction, it does add more difficulty to a relationship. Yeah, it has its own challenges, that's for sure, yeah. And, but that doesn't mean that it can't work out and it won't work out. No, yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. Um, it's happened before. Yeah. You know, the main thing is just, you know, it can be difficult as far as also like if we're going through our own stuff and uh, then we can rub off on each other a little bit easier um, because we're both sensitive people in recovery. So there is gonna be more sensitivity there of, of emotions or offenses and being defensive. So that, that's kind of like more or less the gist of more of the being difficult, I think. Yeah. Because her thing's food, my thing is alcohol, so we don't really tempt each other as much However, but yes. however, if I'm not drinking, then yeah, I, I will go to food because food is like the next best thing, I guess. If I'm not, you know, s smoking or drinking, you know, food's fun, you know, so. People say that you're gaining some weight. I'm gaining the McBelly for the first but, time in my life. But I do think he looks healthier with a little bit of weight on him. Yeah, that's what some people said, yeah. Because when he... When he's drinking, he doesn't take care. He doesn't usually God, eat I did much. Not eat. I did not eat. And he looks sickly. So, yeah. You know. If I look back on that one video where I talked about what I ate, you know, food and supplements I take, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, yeah, I look uh, really skinny. Yeah. Like almost and I remember unhealthy. When like, you when he got here in November, when I hugged him for the very first time, I could feel like every rib in his back and. It was bad. It was like, I'm not used to hugging somebody that was... I, I did barely eat for the past, um, well, now I've been here for six months, but before I came, it was about a good year that I just hardly ate. And I think mainly due to because my mom just passed away, and so I just went on a full-blown binge of just morning, afternoon, night. You know, morning to night, morning to night, morning to night. And the only things I really ate was just nibbles, just so my buzz wouldn't crash. 
it was basically just enough to kind of keep keep my buzz up and let's just keep me feeling let's okay. just add right here because I know that there's gonna be some people who are gonna be like he didn't eat because he couldn't afford it he was homeless I don't he, really know where people. I don't know. Stuff he from. has a home. Really, a lot of our viewers know better. Uh, yeah. Our true subscribers—that's what I call it. And I apologize if I, you know, may had offended anybody with my whole uh, pants thing down, you know, on my other channel. Uh, yeah, that that was toward the haters kind of thing. It was toward the people who are uh, nibby noses and really want to be rude and mean and crude. It's not at all toward our true subscribers who uh, who are truly genuinely supporting us or concerned for us and ask us genuine questions and, um, and, and even use tough love. I respect all of that. When people are rude and they, you know, they, they feel entitled just because we put ourselves out there, out here like this, that like, you know, that's, that's kind of what all that was about. And so, just want to clear that up. Um, and when he says he didn't eat, it wasn't because he had no food. He had a... Yeah, a lot of people make up a lot of stuff. I'm like, wow, there are some very, very gifted prophets and prophetesses and psychics out there. I'm just absolutely amazed. Not. So actually, <laughs> I'm just, I'm actually amazed by how, how there's a lot of people out there that will live their life in pure assumption. And that's their reality. And that's almost scary because it's very delusional. Is I just I know I'm an assumptuous person too, but I mean oh, I don't yeah. like this whole thing here with with YouTube. I, I just want they make up narratives like whole right, life stories, to, total stories. Like they know what yeah. your life is. Yeah, last night I read this comment. This this person had it all figured out that that I took pride in my jail experience. Oh no, no, it's called a prison. So I, I apparently prison. went to prison. <laughs> And, uh, and then that, that I wasted rehab's time and that I'm, you know, cocky and, and prideful, which is, I am, I am kind of cocky and, and smug, but, but, uh, I don't know. They're coming up with all this stuff. I'm just like, oh man, it's, it's such a burden on the soul. It really is. It's, 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 it's exhausting. YouTube can be a absolutely exhausting. And I, I guess it's a hobby for a lot of these people that they're so miserable that they want to drag people down. But then, if 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 we react to that in a negative way, or they're like, uh, oh my God, why would you do that? Then it's like they they want to say, well, you put yourself out there, so and then and then you're gonna act like that people have no right into your life, and you, I don't know, it's. And then the one last thing we'll talk about before we get back to us is I think is I think it's funny. Your smile that you addressed on your channel. Like, well, you kind of addressed it in what? the comments. Your toofy toofy. Yeah, broke my tooth. Somebody. Actually, it didn't break it. It was already somebody what? There was a couple people. Somebody said that I smacked you. Yeah, they're being cute. And then, mm, I don't think so. Uh, and then another person said that you fell while you were drunk and knocked your tooth out. Oh, they're just being cute too. <laughs> So, I, I'm making him into a true West Virginian. God dang right. <laughs> what so, it is, can I tell a story? I'll yeah, tell a story. Let's have story, story time. Story time. When I was eight years old, see, both these front teeth are, are fake. It's a cap. And this one that's broken half, the other one's broken exactly the same way. So it looks like a V. And um, so when I was eight, uh, my sister was chasing me around the house. I have three older sisters, okay? God bless my heart. And they, she was chasing me around the house. And so I, uh, while I was running from her, obviously, because that's what the chase is, there was, I turned around a corner and there was a bar stool uh, with uh, arms, and metal arms, and I ran into that metal arm. And uh, I, I literally went down like this and, and I held out my hand and and one tooth, dunk, and the other tooth, dunk, fell right in my hand. And I was just like, <laughs> it started crying. That's kind of traumatic, you know? I jacked up my, uh, my cosmetics. Can't mess this up. I don't know. That's not really what it was about when I was a kid, but well, I was just, I was terrified because I messed up my, my health and my body. But so anyways, um, sister got reprimanded and uh, I think I wore it like that for a couple of months, then I finally had it fixed. These were supposed to be temporary caps, the dentist said, not to bite into apples, this, that, and the other. And wow, it's lasted actually 33 years. And finally, I had some pizza 
some leftover pizza and I put it in the oven, right? to try to get it back to being good, not microwaved, and it left that in there for too long. So, I mean, the whole pizza was just kind of dried out. The crust was very hard, and I bit into it, and that's what broke it off. So. And he was like, oh, my God, my teeth. And I thought he was joking because we had been joking. I forget what we were joking about before that. And he was like, oh, my God, my tooth. And he just looked at me, and I was like, whatever, that's not funny. Just like I did when you... I don't know. He, he, I joke with her a lot. So he's it's a like joker. A yeah. Cried wolf, and know? I'm like, what? And he's like, seriously. And then he smiled. I'm like, oh my god, like, what happened? To and then West Virginia now. I'm boys making and him girls. a West Virginian. He's getting the belly and the tooth. Being transformed. Mm-hmm. All right. So getting back to our story after we detoured off, because you guys know I ramble and Dean rambles and. I guess that's why we're together is because we ramble. That's one of the things that's it. we have a common. That was it. That, that's it. that was the deal breaker. Yep. Better be a rambler. Better be. <laughs> Are you a rambler? Why, yes, I am. That's hot. That's <laughs> ramble. <laughs> so, the whole point is we've been struggling. We got off track, of course. Story of my life, story of his life, story of our lives. Um, but as we were getting off track, things between us started getting really kind of icky because his drinking triggers me because it always has and like I knew that he was a drinker I knew he had no he had an alcohol problem and you would think that knowing that he drank that it wouldn't trigger me or I just wouldn't have gotten into a relationship with someone that triggered me but love doesn't work that way. Love doesn't see the flaws. Love just sees the flaws as perfection. You don't see the flaws, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess not. Also, she, I think you thought that you, you could help me. I thought I could fix him. Yeah. So there was a lot of I grace wanted. period in the first uh, year, couple of years there was, that we were talking. There was a grace period there of, of acceptance. Yeah. She knew I drank and I continued drinking. That's just what it was. However, it started turning into where she started getting disappointed. The mood started changing. And then it started turning into more of an obsessive controlling thing to where if I would drink, right. and then it just, nothing was right for the rest of the evening. Right. So, and that's where we still are today. So, God forbid I have any kind of beer around here or anything. And, you know. Part of that can be good, but not because it's a very, it causes a lot of stress, so. It just, it feels like once he takes his, and I, and I shouldn't feel this way because he doesn't do this to me when I eat. So I don't, I don't know why I think I have the right to do this to him when he drinks. It's just this like deep part of me that wants to fix him. And this is not how he wants me. Instead of fixing myself and working on myself, it's always easier to work on someone else and try to fix them. So when he has that first drink, it's like, oh my God, the world's ending and here we go again. It's gonna end and nothing's gonna be better. Not realizing in, in the moment that it's a drink and he will be sober again and everything will be okay. It's just in that moment, it feels like the world is over. And then I keep going with that instead of stopping. And and a lot of our problems is my fault because I make things, I'm sure a lot of you aren't surprised at that. Um, I make things worse than they have to be because I just don't, if I would just. It takes it, two to tango. Yeah, it does. A lot of but I, but there's, you have to admit, there's a lot of times that I have made things worse than they would have had to have been. You can keep at it. Quite yeah, persistent. It's I can. a beautiful thing. <laughs> so we got to the place where we were arguing a lot and fighting a lot, and it was just miserable. Yeah. So we yes. came to the point where it was either, and this is just talking about his alcoholism. This isn't talking about my food addiction because that is, uh, we will address that in a couple minutes. But it came to the point where it was either he went and got some more help um, to work on his alcoholism, his addiction, or he was gonna have to either go home or find another place to live. Skedaddle. Yeah. So we came, like I said, we came to the point where we knew that there's something else had to be done and we knew that, I gave him the choice, of course. I'm not, forcing him to do anything he doesn't want to do. He was more than willing or more than able to 
It was his choice if he wanted to go. Willing. Yeah, he was, you know, if he wanted to continue drinking and whatever he wanted to do with his life, life it was his choice. He could obviously move out or go so home. So basically, you know, I relapse, as you guys know, on my, those who follow me on my other channel. Uh, and then I had about a few weeks of clean time and then I relapsed again. I can't really call it, I don't know, call it relapse. I started drinking again. It was just hard as hell to get off the ride. I mean, and so, you know, uh, it's, it's just not easy right now. It's not. And I did start going to AA, um, but, uh, you know, there was one night uh, where she said, uh, you know, you you need to leave, get out now, go find a shelter. So I started looking up shelters, and then she said, what are you doing? They won't they won't accept you because you're drunk. And and so then I was like, okay. So I started Googling uh, the nearest bridge. <laughs> Plus it's hard. The next day when he was sober, when things were better, he did. I think did. it's south of here. There's, you know, there's only like one or two bridges around here. And when, there, he, when we, he opened his computer, he was like, look. And he actually did Google the nearest, nearest bridge. bridge. It's not funny in the moment, but it is funny. when You have to look back at things and laugh. Um, so that's when, like I said, we decided that it was either we needed to get help or part ways. And we decided that we loved each other enough. Yeah, it's worth it. To sure, I, and and not just for each other, but for your own self, your yeah, own for, for future, future and, and health. health. Yeah. yeah. So. That's when, at that point, I went into detox again and uh, to get off the ride because. When an alcoholic, there's an allergy to the alcohol. When it's in the system, you obsess absolutely over it. It's hard as hell to get off of it. It just is. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. It's whatever. They're not an alcoholic. That's fine. And hell, even alcoholics that are alcoholics won't admit that they're an alcoholic and won't admit that they have any kind of a problem. That they are not good. That they can't stay one day without it. It's, it's very few of us who can actually say, yeah, I can, actually I'm an alcoholic and because I cannot stop drinking. There's different levels of it. But if somebody, basically, if somebody has to have a drink every single day, might be an alcoholic. Anyways, uh, I guess I'm deflecting a bit. Um, yeah, went into detox. Not that I really needed to detox. I just needed to get off the ride and get, get my mind back into recovery mode. So it really did help. And so now I'm instituting those things that I learned there again and back on uh, when I used to be there, dug out my folder. We started going over things every single morning and uh, starting on our recovery on a whole nother level, spiritual level two, reading the scriptures every morning and um, just, just getting into some positive conscious recovery reinforcement action. So when he came back, we had decided that I had already started, when he was gone, I already started eating healthier. And I made my proclamation that life was gonna be better and I was gonna take this seriously, then it didn't happen because, well, there's all these reasons why. There's, there's tons of excuses, but it just comes down to it just didn't happen. Uh, I've been dealing with a lot of medical issues for the past couple of weeks, pretty severe, and I used that as an excuse where I just wanted to eat to be comforted because I was feel I'm feeling so poorly. The past two days, I'm very blessed to have been good days, but there are not so good days, and you know it's easy to partake in your addiction. But I need to take my addiction as seriously as he is, and it's not fair that he works on his if I'm not going to work on mine, and I can't expect more from him than I expect from myself. So I have to be willing to put it out there and suck it up. I, we just talked about this where I didn't really want to admit that I'm doing poorly. I mean, obviously you could tell I haven't lost that much weight or any weight. So it's not like this big secret, but being able to admit it, we just had this conversation and in a cut. Um, he put himself out there and opened himself up, made himself vulnerable. So I need to do the same thing. Struggling, past few days, past three days have been a lot better for me. I'm eating healthier, I'm back on track, 
and I've had good days. I've felt physically well, medically well. I haven't had any medical issues. Um, I don't really want to go into my specific medical issues. There are things that I've talked about in the past, but I just prefer not to at the moment. Um, so, like I said, we're both struggling, but I think in the past two weeks, we have, even though my food has not been that great for the whole two weeks, I think that we have made a lot of headway in recovery, as in focusing on ourselves spiritually and emotionally. I think we've been relating to each other a lot better. We've been doing a Christian counseling. It's a book, like a workbook. It's a 52-week and I'll pop the picture in here. I don't have the book with me right now, but it's been really well. It's been working really well for us. It gives you, each week you read a passage and it gives you a topic to work on for that week. And it's given us a lot of insight on how to relate to each other more on a spiritual basis, on a biblical basis, and to be able to communicate with each other. And I'm rambling. But anyhow, we are making progress. I, like the book. I do too. Oh, I, I found it very helpful. If anything makes you conscious of priorities in a relationship, certain dynamics that maybe tend to ignore or look over. Yes. Especially if you're new to a whole relationship thing. Yes. Maybe a lot of you that's been married, you know, it's might be more experienced in these areas, but yeah, sharpens the sword. I agree. And like I said, we, we're getting back on track. I feel more positive. Once I'm on track, I feel more positive to keep going. It's just getting on, getting back to the, like he talked about, about he had to make that break from the alcohol. Once I've made that break from the food, I feel a lot better. I'm starting to feel better. The cloud, the haze is lifting and I can see, I feel more positive again. And it, it is, encouraging when you feel that way you want to keep moving forward and keep going and getting better and I feel hopeful yeah I do and I feel like doing videos again which is good because I missed you guys and I miss doing my videos um, we have a lot of videos coming up we have a lot of ideas we're going to be doing a question and answer or reading comments on this video the comments left in this below on this video I have in the next couple of days a crochet tutorial coming out that I had promised a while ago for a couple people and some other fun videos and some other videos, some cook with me's, what I eat in a day's. Maybe teach me how to crochet. We, yes, we talked about we that. We did this talk past about year. that, getting teaching so, him. Oh, maybe put that up. I was gonna say he could teach me how to sketch, but there's no hope in that because I'm just not talented. Um but yeah, we're doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. Also gonna learn how to play chess. Yes, our chess game comes tomorrow. We, we bought a chess board. I was like, baby, gotta learn how to play chess. So you're gonna, gonna play chess. Maybe we'll video a chess game. Yeah, why not? <laughs> not that we'll anybody might be any in interested in it, but you know, whatever. Anyhow, that's where we're at. We are doing better. Yeah. It's just a day-to-day -day thing. It is. Yeah. There's good days, there's bad days. Yeah. All right, so we're going to wrap things up, and we will talk to you guys again soon. We'll see you probably back in the next couple days. At least I will for another video, and you can jump over to Gene's channel for a video from him, or you might see him again here. I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see you soon, and I hope you guys are having a good week. Remember... Be the love, be the light, and do good things. Bye, everyone.